Vilnius Lithuanian pronunciation VLN listen see also other names is the capital of Lithuania and its largest city with a population of 574147 as of 2018 Vilnius is in the southeast part of Lithuania and is the second largest city in the Baltic states Vilnius is the seat of the main government institutions of Lithuania and the Vilnius district municipality Vilnius is classified as a Gamma Global City according to GAWC studies, and is known for the architecture in its old town, declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994. Before World War II, Vilnius was one of the largest Jewish centers in Europe. Its Jewish influence has led to it being described as the Jerusalem of Lithuania, and Napoleon named it the Jerusalem of the North, as he was passing through in 1812. In 2009, Vilnius was the European capital of culture, together with the Austrian city of Linz. Etymology and other names The name of the city originates from the Vilnia River. The city has also been known by many derivate spellings in various languages throughout its history. Vilna was once common in English. The most notable non-Lithuanian names for the city include, Polish, Wilno, Belarusian, Vi Lana, German, Wilna, Latvian, Vilna, Russian, Vilna Ukrainian, Vilno Yiddish, Wallen Vilne. A Russian name from the time of the Russian Empire was Vilna, Vilna although Vilnius Vilnius is now used. The names Wilno, Wilna and Vilna have also been used in Older English, German, French and Italian language publications when the city was one of the capitals of Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and later an important city in the Second Polish Republic. The name Vilna is still used in Finnish, Portuguese, Spanish, and Hebrew. Wilna is still used in German, along with Vilnius. The neighborhoods of Vilnius also have names in other languages, which represent the languages spoken by various ethnic groups in the area. According to the legend, Grand Duke Gediminas c. was hunting in the sacred forest near the valley of Sventeragis, near where Vilnia River flows into the Neris River. Tired after the successful hunt of a wizen, the Grand Duke settled in for the night. He fell soundly asleep and dreamed of a huge iron wolf standing on top a hill and howling as strong and loud as a hundred wolves. Upon awakening, the duke asked the Krivis pagan priest Lizdeka to interpret the dream. And the priest told him, What is destined for the ruler and the state of Lithuania, is thus, the iron wolf represents a castle and a city which will be established by you on this site. This city will be the capital of the Lithuanian lands and the dwelling of their rulers, and the glory of their deeds shall echo throughout the world." Therefore, Gediminas, obeying the will of the gods, built the city, and gave it the name Vilnius, from the stream of the Vilnia River. History Early history and Grand Duchy of Lithuania Historian Romas Batura identifies the city with Voruta, one of the castles of Mendogas, crowned in 1253 as king of Lithuania. During the reign of Vitenis a city started to emerge from a trading settlement and the first Franciscan Catholic church was built. The city was first mentioned in written sources in 1323 as Vilna, when the letters of Grand Duke Gediminas were sent to German cities inviting Germans including German Jews to settle in the capital city, as well as to Pope John XXII. These letters contain the first unambiguous reference to Vilnius as the capital. Old Trakai Castle had been the earlier seat of the court of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. According to legend, Gediminas dreamt of an iron wolf howling on a hilltop and consulted a pagan priest Lizdeka for its interpretation. He was told, What is destined for the ruler and the state of Lithuania, is thus, the iron wolf represents a castle and a city which will be established by you on this site. This city will be the capital of the Lithuanian lands and the dwelling of their rulers, and the glory of their deeds shall echo throughout the world." The location offered practical advantages, it lay in the Lithuanian heartland at the confluence of two navigable rivers, surrounded by forests and wetlands that were difficult to penetrate. The duchy had been subject to intrusions by the Teutonic Knights. Vilnius was the flourishing capital of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, the residence of the Grand Duke. Gediminas expanded the Grand Duchy through warfare along with strategic alliances and marriages. 
At its height it covered the territory of modern-day Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, Transnistria, and portions of modern-day Poland and Russia. His grandchildren Vytautas the Great and Jogela, however, fought civil wars. During the Lithuanian Civil War of 1389–1392, Vytautas besieged and razed the city in an attempt to wrest control from Jogela. The two later settled their differences. After a series of treaties culminating in the 1569 Union of Lublin, the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth was formed. The rulers of this federation held either or both of two titles Grand Duke of Lithuania or King of Poland. In 1387, Jogela, acting as a Grand Duke of Lithuania and King of Poland Wladyslaw II Jagiello, granted Magdeburg rights to the city. Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth The city underwent a period of expansion. The Vilnius city walls were built for protection between 1503 and 1522, comprising nine city gates and three towers, and Sigismund August moved his court there in 1544. Its growth was due in part to the establishment of Alma Academia et Universitas Vilnensis Societatis Iesu by the Polish King and Grand Duke of Lithuania Stefan Batory in 1579. The university soon developed into one of the most important scientific and cultural centers of the region and the most notable scientific center of the Commonwealth. During its rapid development, the city was open to migrants from the territories of the Crown of the Kingdom of Poland, Grand Duchy, and further. A variety of languages were spoken – Polish, German, Yiddish, Ruthenian, Lithuanian, Russian, Old Church Slavonic, Latin, Hebrew, and Turkic languages. The city was compared to Babylon. Each group made its unique contribution to the life of the city, and crafts, trade, and science prospered. The 17th century brought a number of setbacks. The Commonwealth was involved in a series of wars, collectively known as the Deluge. During the Russo-Polish War 1654 Vilnius was occupied by Russian forces, it was pillaged and burned, and its population was massacred. During the Great Northern War it was looted by the Swedish army. An outbreak of bubonic plague in 1710 killed about 35,000 residents. Devastating fires occurred in 1715, 1737, 1741, 1748, and 1749. The city's growth lost its momentum for many years, but even despite this fact, at the end of the 18th century and before the Napoleon Wars, Vilnius, with 56,000 inhabitants, entered the Russian Empire as its third largest city. In the Russian Empire The fortunes of the Commonwealth declined during the 18th century. Three partitions took place, dividing its territory among the Russian Empire, the Habsburg Empire, and the Kingdom of Prussia. After the third partition of April 1795, Vilnius was annexed by the Russian Empire and became the capital of the Vilna Governorate. During Russian rule, the city walls were destroyed, and by 1805 only the Gate of Dawn remained. In 1812, the city was taken by Napoleon on his push towards Moscow, and again during the disastrous retreat. The Grande Armée was welcomed in Vilnius. Thousands of soldiers died in the city during the eventual retreat. The mass graves were uncovered in 2002. Inhabitants expected Tsar Alexander I to grant them autonomy in response to Napoleon's promises to restore the Commonwealth, but Vilnius did not become autonomous, neither by itself nor as a part of Congress Poland. Following the November Uprising in 1831, Vilnius University was closed and Russian repressions halted the further development of the city. Civil unrest in 1861 was suppressed by the Imperial Russian Army. During the January Uprising in 1863, heavy fighting occurred within the city, but was brutally pacified by Mikhail Moraviov, nicknamed the Hangman by the population because of the number of executions he organized. After the uprising, all civil liberties were withdrawn, and use of the Polish and Lithuanian languages was banned. Vilnius had a vibrant Jewish population. According to Russian census of 1897, out of the total population of 154,500, Jews constituted 64,000, approximately 40%. During the early 20th century, the Lithuanian-speaking population of Vilnius constituted only a small minority, with Polish, Yiddish, and Russian speakers comprising the majority of the city's population. In Poland 
During World War I, Vilnius and the rest of Lithuania was occupied by the German army from 1915 until 1918. The Act of Independence of Lithuania, declaring Lithuanian independence from any affiliation to any other nation, was issued in the city on 16 February 1918. After the withdrawal of German forces, the city was briefly controlled by Polish self-defense units, which were driven out by advancing Soviet forces. Vilnius changed hands again during the Polish-Soviet War and the Lithuanian Wars of Independence, it was taken by the Polish army, only to fall to Soviet forces again. Shortly after its defeat in the Battle of Warsaw, the retreating Red Army, in order to delay the Polish advance, ceded the city to Lithuania after signing the Soviet-Lithuanian Peace Treaty on the 12th of July 1920. Poland and Lithuania both perceived the city as their own. The League of Nations became involved in the subsequent dispute between the two countries. The League brokered the Sawalki Agreement on the 7th of October 1920. Although neither Vilnius or the surrounding region was explicitly addressed in the agreement, numerous historians have described the agreement as allotting Vilnius to Lithuania. On 9 October 1920, the Polish army surreptitiously, under General Lukjan Zeligowski, seized Vilnius during an operation known as Zeligowski's Mutiny. The city and its surroundings were designated as a separate state, called the Republic of Central Lithuania. On 20 February 1922 after the highly contested election in central Lithuania, the entire area was annexed by Poland, with the city becoming the capital of the Wilno Voivodeship Wilno being the name of Vilnius in Polish. Kaunas then became the temporary capital of Lithuania. Lithuania vigorously contested the Polish annexation of Vilnius, and refused diplomatic relations with Poland. The predominant languages of the city were still Polish and, to a lesser extent, Yiddish. The Lithuanian-speaking population at the time was a small minority, at about 6% of the city's population according even to contemporary Lithuanian sources. The Council of Ambassadors and the international community with the exception of Lithuania recognized Polish sovereignty over Vilnius region in 1923. Vilnius University was reopened in 1919 under the name of Stefan Batory University. By 1931, the city had 195,000 inhabitants, making it the fifth largest city in Poland with varied industries, such as electorate, a factory that produced radio receivers. <inaudible> <inaudible> World War II World War II began with the German invasion of Poland in September 1939. The secret protocols of the Molotov–Ribbentrop Pact had partitioned Lithuania and Poland into German and Soviet spheres of interest. On 19 September 1939, Vilnius was seized by the Soviet Union which invaded Poland on 17 September. The USSR and Lithuania concluded a mutual assistance treaty on 10 October 1939, with which the Lithuanian government accepted the presence of Soviet military bases in various parts of the country. On 28 October 1939, the Red Army withdrew from the city to its suburbs to Vilnia and Vilnius was given over to Lithuania. A Lithuanian army parade took place on 29 October 1939 through the city centre. The Lithuanians immediately attempted to Lithuanize the city, for example by Lithuanizing Polish schools. However, the whole of Lithuania was annexed by the Soviet Union on 3 August 1940 following a June ultimatum from the Soviets demanding, among other things, that unspecified numbers of Red Army soldiers be allowed to enter the country for the purpose of helping to form a more pro-Soviet government. After the ultimatum was issued and Lithuania further occupied, a Soviet government was installed with Vilnius as the capital of the newly created Lithuanian SSR. Between 20,000 and 30,000 of the city's inhabitants were subsequently arrested by the NKVD and sent to gulags in the far eastern areas of the Soviet Union. The Soviets devastated city industries, moving the major Polish radio factory electorate, along with a part of its labor force, to Minsk in Belarus, where it was renamed the Vyacheslav Molotov Radio Factory, after Stalin's Minister of Foreign Affairs. On the 22nd of June 1941, the Germans launched Operation Barbarossa against the Soviet Union. Vilnius was captured on 24 June. Two ghettos were set up in the old town centre for the large Jewish population, the smaller one of which was liquidated by October. The larger ghetto lasted until 1943, though its population was regularly deported in roundups known as Actionen. 
A failed ghetto uprising on 1 September 1943 organized by the Ferenigti Partisaner Organization the United Partisan Organization, the first Jewish partisan unit in German-occupied Europe, was followed by the final destruction of the ghetto. During the Holocaust, about 95% of the 265,000 strong Jewish population of Lithuania was murdered by the German units and Lithuanian Nazi collaborators, many of them in Panerii, about 10 kilometers (6.2 miles) west of the old town center. See the Paneri massacre. Topic: In the Lithuanian SSR, Soviet Union. In July 1944, Vilnius was captured from the Germans by the Soviet Army and the Polish Army Akrajowa. See Operation Ostra Brahma and the Vilnius Offensive. The NKVD arrested the leaders of the Army Akrajowa after requesting a meeting. Shortly afterwards, the town was once again incorporated into the Soviet Union as the capital of the Lithuanian SSR. The war had irreversibly altered the town, most of the predominantly Polish and Jewish population had been expelled and exterminated respectively, during and after the German occupation. Some members of the intelligentsia and former Waffen-SS members hiding in the forest were now targeted and deported to Siberia after the war. The majority of the remaining population was compelled to move to Communist Poland by 1946, and Sovietization began in earnest. Only in the 1960s did Vilnius begin to grow again, following an influx of Lithuanians and Poles from neighboring regions and from other areas of the Soviet Union, particularly Russia and Belarus. Microdistricts were built in the elderates of Seskin, Zermanai, Justiniskis and Fabihoniskis. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Independent Lithuania. On the 11th of March 1990, the Supreme Council of the Lithuanian SSR announced its secession from the Soviet Union and intention to restore an independent Republic of Lithuania. As a result of these declarations, on the 9th of January 1991, the Soviet Union sent in troops. This culminated in the 13th of January attack on the state radio and television building and the Vilnius TV tower, killing at least 14 civilians and seriously injuring 700 more. The Soviet Union finally recognized Lithuanian independence in September 1991. The current constitution, as did the earlier Lithuanian constitution of 1922, mentions that, "...the capital of the state of Lithuania shall be the city of Vilnius, the long-standing historical capital of Lithuania." Vilnius has been rapidly transformed, and the town has emerged as a modern European city. Many of its older buildings have been renovated, and a business and commercial area is being developed into the new city centre, expected to become the city's main administrative and business district on the north side of the Neris River. This area includes modern residential and retail space, with the municipality building and the 129-metre Europa Tower as its most prominent buildings. The construction of Swedbank's headquarters is symbolic of the importance of Scandinavian banks in Vilnius. The building complex Vilnius Business Harbour was built in 2008, and one of its towers is now the fifth tallest building in Lithuania. More buildings are scheduled for construction in the area. Vilnius was selected as a 2009 European Capital of Culture, along with Linz, the capital of Upper Austria. Its 2009 New Year's Eve celebration, marking the event, featured a light show said to be visible from outer space. In preparation, the historical center of the city was restored, and its main monuments were renovated. The global economic crisis led to a drop in tourism which prevented many of the projects from reaching their planned extent, and allegations of corruption and incompetence were made against the organizers, while tax increases for cultural activity led to public protests and the general economic conditions sparked riots. In 2015 Remigius Samasius became the first directly elected mayor of the city. Internet access in Vilnius reaches an average download speed of 36.37 megabytes per second and upload speed of 28.51 megabytes per second. On 28 to 29 November 2013, Vilnius hosted the Eastern Partnership Summit in the Palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania. Many European presidents, prime ministers and other high-ranking officials participated in the event. On 29 November 2013, Georgia and Moldova signed association and free trade agreements with the European Union. 
Previously, Ukraine and Armenia were also expected to sign the agreements but postponed the decision, sparking large protests in Ukraine. Topic: <laughs> Geography. Vilnius is situated in southeastern Lithuania, 54 degrees 41 and 25 degrees 17 e at the confluence of the Vilnia and Neris rivers. Lying close to Vilnius is a site some claim to be the geographical center of Europe. Vilnius lies 312 kilometers (194 miles) from the Baltic Sea and Klaipeda, the chief Lithuanian seaport. Vilnius is connected by highways to other major Lithuanian cities, such as Kaunas (102 kilometers or 63 miles away), Sholay (214 kilometers or 133 miles away), and Panevėžys (135 kilometers or 84 miles away). The current area of Vilnius is 402 square kilometers, 155 square miles. Buildings occupy 29.1% of the city, green spaces occupy 68.8% and waters occupy 2.1%. Topic: Climate. The climate of Vilnius is humid continental, Köppen climate classification Dfb. Temperature records have been kept since 1777. The average annual temperature is 6.7 degrees Celsius, 44 degrees Fahrenheit. In January, the average temperature is minus 4.3 degrees Celsius, 24 degrees Fahrenheit. In July, it is 18.1 degrees Celsius, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The average precipitation is about 682 millimeters, 26.85 in per year. Average annual temperatures in the city have increased significantly during the last 30 years, a change which the Lithuanian Hydrometeorological Service attributes to global warming induced by human activities. Summer days are pleasantly warm and sometimes hot, especially in July and August, with temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius (86 degrees Fahrenheit) throughout the day during periodic heat waves. Night life in Vilnius is in full swing at this time of year, and outdoor bars, restaurants and cafes become very popular during the daytime. Winters can be very cold, with temperatures rarely reaching above freezing, temperatures below minus 25 degrees Celsius minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit are not unheard of in January and February. Vilnius's rivers freeze over in particularly cold winters, and the lakes surrounding the city are almost always permanently frozen during this time of year. A popular pastime is ice fishing. Topic: Demographics. 1897, according to the first census in the Russian Empire, in 1897 population of Vilnius was 154,500. The largest linguistic groups at the time were those speaking Yiddish, 61,847, and Polish, 47,795. Other groups included Russian 30,967, Belarusian 6,514, and Ukrainian 517, Lithuanian 3,131, German 2,170, Tartar 722, and Latvian 184 speaking communities. According to the census, 52.4% of the inhabitants were local, while others settled in the city from other regions. Among the townsmen class, there were 36,576 newcomers among whose, 17,465 were born in Vilna Governorate. Among the peasant newcomers, 16,312 came from other localities of Vilna Governorate and 16,054 from the other governorates. Among the nobility class in Vilnius during the census of 1897, there were 5,301 local nobles and 6,403 newcomers, 24.1% of these noble newcomers came from Vilna Governorate territories, while the rest newcomers nobles came to Vilnius from Grodno Governorate, Minsk Governorate, Vitesk Governorate, Kovno Governorate, Vistula Land and other regions. 1916, according to the census of 14 December 1916 by the occupying German forces at the time, there were a total of 138,794 inhabitants in Vilnius. 
This number was made up of the following nationalities, Poles 53.67% 74,466 inhabitants, Jews 41.45% 57,516 inhabitants, Lithuanians 2.09% 2,909 inhabitants, Russians 1.59% 2,219 inhabitants, Germans 0.63% 880 inhabitants, Belarusians 0.44% 644 inhabitants and others at 0.13% 193 inhabitants 1923 to 167545 inhabitants including 100830 poles and 55437 jews 1931 to 196345 inhabitants a census of 9 December 1931 reveals that Poles made up 65.9% of the total Vilnius population 128,600 inhabitants, Jews 28% 54,600 inhabitants, Russians 3.8% 7,400 inhabitants, Belarusians 0.9% 1,700 inhabitants, Lithuanians 0.8% 1,579 inhabitants, Germans 0.3% 600 inhabitants, Ukrainians 0.1% 200 inhabitants, others 0.2% approximately, 400 inhabitants. The Wilno Voivodeship in the same year had 1,272,851 inhabitants, of which 511,741 used Polish as their language of communication, many Belarusians lived there. 1959, according to the Soviet census, Vilnius had 236,100 inhabitants, of which 34% identified themselves as Lithuanian, 29% as Russian, 20% as Polish, 7% as Jewish and 6% as Belarusian. 1989, according to the Soviet census, Vilnius had 576,700 inhabitants, of which 50.5% were Lithuanian, 20% Russian, 19% Polish and 5% Belarusian. 2001, according to the 2001 census by the Vilnius Regional Statistical Office, there were 542,287 inhabitants in the Vilnius city municipality, of which 57.8% were Lithuanians, 18.7% Poles, 14% Russians, 4.0% Belarusians, 1.3% Ukrainians, and 0.5% Jews. The remainder indicated other nationalities or refused to answer. 2011, according to the 2011 census by Statistics Lithuania, Vilnius is inhabited by people of 128 different ethnicities which makes it the most ethnically diverse city in Lithuania, while the majority of Vilnius population is made up by Lithuanians 63.6%. Poles, Russians, and Belarusians make up most of the remaining population. Evolution <inaudible> <inaudible> Demographic evolution of Vilnius between 1766 and 2017 Culture There are 65 churches in Vilnius. Like most medieval towns, Vilnius was developed around its town hall. Police Street, the main artery, links the royal palace with town hall. Other streets meander through the palaces of feudal lords and landlords, churches, shops and craftsmen's workrooms. Narrow, curved streets and intimate courtyards developed in the radial layout of medieval Vilnius. The old town of Vilnius is the historical center of Vilnius about 3.6 square kilometers 1.4 square miles in size. The most valuable historic and cultural sites are concentrated here. The buildings in the old town. There are nearly 1,500 were built over several centuries, creating a blend of many different architectural styles. Although Vilnius is known as a Baroque city, there are examples of Gothic e.g. Church of St. Anne, Renaissance, and other styles. Their combination is also a gateway to the historic center of the capital. Owing to its uniqueness, the old town of Vilnius was inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1994. 
Vilnius University's main campuses features 13 courtyards framed by 15th-century buildings and splashed with 300-year-old frescoes, and the Church of St. John's. The Gate of Dawn, the only surviving gate of the first original five gates in the city wall, hosts the painting of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which has been said to have miracle-working powers. Over 200 tiles and commemorative plaques to writers, who have lived and worked in Vilnius, and foreign authors, who have shared a connection with Vilnius and Lithuania, adorn a wall on Literature Street Lithuanian, Literature Gatvi in the Old Town, presenting a broad overview of the history of Lithuanian literature. In Antakalnis district there is Church of St. Peter and St. Paul, a masterpiece of the 17th-century Baroque famous for its exceptional interior where one can see about 2,000 stucco figures. In 1995, the world's first bronze cast of Frank Zappa was installed in the Naujamistis district with the permission of the government. The Frank Zappa sculpture confirmed the newly found freedom of expression and marked the beginning of a new era for Lithuanian society. The Vilnius Castle Complex, a group of defensive, cultural, and religious buildings that includes Gediminas Tower of the Upper Castle which is a part of National Museum of Lithuania, Cathedral Square and the Palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania. Lithuania's largest art collection is housed in the Lithuanian Art Museum. One branch of it, the Vilnius Picture Gallery in the Old Town, houses a collection of Lithuanian art from the 16th to the beginning of the 20th century. On the other side of the Neris, the National Art Gallery holds a permanent exhibition on Lithuanian 20th century art, as well as numerous exhibitions on modern art. The House of the Signatories, where the 1918 Act of Independence of Lithuania was signed, is now a historic landmark. The Museum of Genocide Victims is dedicated to the victims of the Soviet era. The Contemporary Art Center is the largest venue for contemporary art in the Baltic states, with an exhibition space of 2,400 square meters. The center is a non-collection-based institution committed to developing a broad range of international and Lithuanian exhibition projects as well as presenting a wide range of public programs including lectures, seminars, performances, film and video screenings, and live new music events. The Martinus Masvidas National Library of Lithuania, named for the author of the first book printed in the Lithuanian language, holds 6,912,266 physical items. The biggest book fair in Baltic states is annually held in Vilnius at LITEXPO, the Baltic's biggest exhibition center. On the 10th of November 2007, the Jonas Mikas Visual Arts Center was opened by avant-garde filmmaker Jonas Mikas. Its premier exhibition was entitled The Avant-Garde, From Futurism to Fluxus. The Modern Art Center, which is scheduled to be completed in 2018, will become a new cultural space for the city of Vilnius. It will host a private collection of modern and contemporary Lithuanian visual art. The museum will host exhibitions featuring works from St. Petersburg's Hermitage Museum and the Guggenheim Museums, along with non-commercial avant-garde cinema, a library, a museum of Lithuanian Jewish culture, and collections of works by Jonas Mikas and Jurgis Masiunas. The Uzipi district near the Old Town, which used to be one of the more run-down districts of Vilnius during the Soviet era, is home to a movement of Bohemian artists, who operate numerous art galleries and workshops. Uzipi declared itself an independent republic on April Fool's Day in 1997. In the main square, the statue of an angel blowing a trumpet stands as a symbol of artistic freedom. In 2015, the project of Vilnius talking statues was realized. Fifteen statues around Vilnius now interact with visitors in multiple languages by a simple telephone call to a smartphone. Vilnius City Opera, an independent opera theater in Lithuania, blends classical with contemporary art. Lithuanian National Drama Theatre, State Small Theatre of Vilnius, State Youth Theatre and a number of private theatre companies, including OKT, Vilnius City Theatre, Angelika Cholina Dance Theatre and others, show classical, modern and Lithuanian playwriting directed by world-known Lithuanian and foreign directors. The Lithuanian National Philharmonic Society is the largest and oldest state-owned concert organization in Lithuania, whose main activity is to organize and coordinate live concerts, diverse classical, classical contemporary, jazz music events and tours throughout Lithuania and abroad. The Lithuanian State Symphony Orchestra every year builds up a wide-ranging repertoire, introduces exceptional programs, and invites young talent to perform along with outstanding and recognized soloists. Economy 
Vilnius is the major economic center of Lithuania. GDP per capita nominal in Vilnius County was €20,000 in purchasing power in 2016, making it the wealthiest region in Lithuania. The budget of Vilnius reached $720 million in 2018. The average monthly net salary in Vilnius city municipality reached €820 Euros as of 2018 average gross salary in Vilnius was €1,070. Topic. Education The city has 12 primary schools, 19 progymnasiums and 42 gymnasiums, the city has many universities. The largest and oldest is Vilnius University with 20,864 students. Its main premises are in the Old Town. The university has been ranked among the top 500 universities in the world by QS World University Rankings. The university is participating in projects with UNESCO and NATO, among others. It features master's programs in English and Russian, as well as programs delivered in cooperation with universities all over Europe. The university is currently divided into 12 faculties, 7 institutes, and 4 study and research centers. Other major universities include Mikolas Ramirez University, 17,739 students as of 2013, Vilnius Gediminas Technical University, 10,500 students, and Lithuanian University of Educational Sciences, 3,550 students. Specialized higher schools with university status include General Jonas Zamatis Military Academy of Lithuania, Lithuanian Academy of Music and Theatre and Vilnius Academy of Arts. The museum associated with the Vilnius Academy of Arts holds about 12,000 artworks. There are also a few private universities such as ISM University of Management and Economics, European Humanities University and Kazimieras Simonovicius University. Several colleges are also in Vilnius including Vilnius College, Vilnius College of Technologies and Design, International School of Law and Business and others. Religion Already in the 17th century Vilnius was known as a city of many religions. In 1600, Samuel Lukener's book describing cities with universities was published in London. Lukener mentions that citizens of Vilnius included Catholics, Orthodox, followers of John Calvin and Martin Luther, Jews and Tartar Muslims. Throughout the 17th century Vilnius had a reputation as a city which had no rivals in Europe in the number of churches of different confessions. At the end of the century, this reputation was confirmed by the highly regarded and several times republished work by Robert Morton, Geography Rectified or a Description of the World which said that no other city in the world could surpass Vilnius in the number of churches and temples of various faiths, except perhaps Amsterdam. Today Vilnius is the seat of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Vilnius, with the main church institutions and Archdiocesan Cathedral, Vilnius Cathedral here. Vilnius became the birthplace of the Divine Mercy devotion when St. Faustina began her mission under the guidance and discernment of her new spiritual director Fr. Michal Sapako. In 1934, the first Divine Mercy painting was painted by Eugene Kazimierowski under the supervision of Faustina and it presently hangs in the Divine Mercy Sanctuary in Vilnius. Numerous other Christian beatified persons, martyrs, servants of God and saints, are associated with Vilnius. These, among others, include Franciscan martyrs of Vilnius, Orthodox martyrs Anthony, John, and Eustathius, St. Casimir, Husafat Kuncevich, Andrew Babala, Raphael Kalinowski, Jurgis Machilatus. There are a number of other active Roman Catholic churches in the city, along with small enclosed monasteries and religion schools. Church architecture includes Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque and Neoclassical styles, with important examples of each found in the Old Town. Additionally, Eastern Rite Catholicism has maintained a presence in Vilnius since the Union of Brest. The Baroque Basilian Gate is part of an Eastern Rite monastery. Once widely known as Yerushalayim de Lida, the Jerusalem of Lithuania, Vilnius, since the 18th century, was a world center for the study of the Torah, and had a large Jewish population. A major scholar of Judaism and Kabbalah centered in Vilnius was the famous Rabbi Eliyahu Kramer, also known as the Vilna Gaon. His students have significant influence among Orthodox Jews in Israel and around the globe. 
Jewish life in Vilnius was destroyed during the Holocaust. There is a memorial stone dedicated to victims of Nazi genocide in the center of the former Jewish ghetto now Messiniu Street. The Vilna Gaon Jewish State Museum is dedicated to the history of Lithuanian Jewish life. The site of Vilnius's largest synagogue, built in the early 1630s and wrecked by Nazi Germany during its occupation of Lithuania, was found by ground penetrating radar in June 2015, with excavations set to begin in 2016. The Karaim are a Jewish sect that migrated to Lithuania from the Crimea to serve as a military elite unit in the 14th century. Although their numbers are very small, the Karaim are becoming more prominent since Lithuanian independence, and have restored their Kanisa. Vilnius has been home to an Eastern Orthodox Christian presence since the 13th or even the 12th century. A famous Russian Orthodox monastery of the Holy Spirit, is near the Gate of Dawn. St. Paraskeva's Orthodox Church in the Old Town is the site of the baptism of Hannibal, the great-grandfather of Pushkin, by Tsar Peter the Great in 1705. Many old believers, who split from the Russian Orthodox Church in 1667, settled in Lithuania. The Church of St. Michael and St. Constantine was built in 1913. Today a Supreme Council of the Old Believers is based in Vilnius. A number of Protestant and other Christian groups are represented in Vilnius, most notably the Lutheran Evangelicals and the Baptists. The pre-Christian religion of Lithuania, centered on the forces of nature as personified by deities such as Perkunas the thunder god, is experiencing some increased interest. Romuva established a Vilnius branch in 1991. <laughs> Topic. Parks, squares and cemeteries Almost half of Vilnius is covered by green areas, such as parks, public gardens, natural reserves. Additionally, Vilnius is host to numerous lakes, where residents and visitors swim and have barbecues in the summer. Thirty lakes and 16 rivers cover 2.1% of Vilnius area, with some of them having sand beaches. Vingas Park, the city's largest, hosted several major rallies during Lithuania's drive towards independence in the 1980s. Concerts, festivals, and exhibitions are held at Bernardinai Garden, near Gediminas Tower. Sections of the annual Vilnius Marathon pass along the public walkways on the banks of the Neris River. The green area next to the White Bridge is another popular area to enjoy good weather, and has become venue for several music and large screen events. Cathedral Square in Old Town is surrounded by a number of the city's most historically significant sites. Lukask Square is the largest, bordered by several governmental buildings, the Lithuanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Finance, the Polish Embassy, and the Genocide Victims Museum, where the KGB tortured and murdered numerous opposers of the communist regime. An oversized statue of Lenin in its center was removed in 1991. Town Hall Square has long been a center of trade fairs, celebrations, and events in Vilnius, including the Kaziukas Fair. The city Christmas tree is decorated there. State ceremonies are often held in Daukantas Square, facing the presidential palace. Rosso's Cemetery, consecrated in 1801, is the burial site of Jonas Basanovicius and other signatories of the 1918 Act of Independence, along with the heart of Polish leader Józef Pilsudski. Two of the three Jewish cemeteries in Vilnius were destroyed by communist authorities during the Soviet era. The remains of the Vilna Gaon were moved to the remaining one. A monument was erected at the place where Uzipi Old Jewish Cemetery was. About 18,000 burials have been made in the Bernardine Cemetery, established in 1810. It was closed during the 1970s and is now being restored. Antakalnis Cemetery, established in 1809, contains various memorials to Polish, Lithuanian, German and Russian soldiers, along with the graves of those who were killed during the January events. On 20 October 2013, Bernardinai Garden, previously known as Sirakusks Park, was opened after reconstruction. The authentic 19th-century Vladislova's Strauss's environment was restored. Sports. Several teams are based in the city. The largest is the basketball club BC Rydus, which participates in European competitions such as the Euroleague and EuroCup, the domestic Lithuanian Basketball League, winning the ULEB Cup predecessor to the EuroCup in 2005 and the EuroCup in 2009. 
Its home arena is the 2,500-seat Litovos Rytas Arena. All European matches and important domestic matches are played in the 11,000-seat Siemens Arena. Vilnius also has several football teams. FK Jalgiris is the main football team. The club plays at LFF Stadium in Vilnius capacity 5067. Olympic champions in swimming Lina Kashasite and Robertas Zulpa are from Vilnius. There are several public swimming pools in Vilnius with Lazdanai swimming pool being the only Olympic size swimming pool of the city. The city is home to the Lithuanian Bandy Association, Badminton Federation, Canoeing Sports Federation, Baseball Association, Biathlon Federation, Sailors Union, Football Federation, Fencing Federation, Cycling Sports Federation, Archery Federation, Athletics Federation, Ice Hockey Federation, Basketball Federation, Curling Federation, Rowing Federation, Wrestling Federation, Speed Skating Association, Gymnastics Federation, Equestrian Union, Modern Pentathlon Federation, Shooting Union, Triathlon Federation, Volleyball Federation, Tennis Union, Taekwondo Federation, Weightlifting Federation, Table Tennis Association, Skiing Association, Rugby Federation, Swimming Federation. Transport Navigability of the River Neris is very limited and no regular water routes exist, although it was used for navigation in the past. The river rises in Belarus, connecting Vilnius and Kurnave, and becomes a tributary of Namunas River in Kaunas. Vilnius Airport serves most Lithuanian international flights to many major European destinations. Currently, the airport has about 50 destinations in about 25 different countries. The airport is situated only 5 kilometers (3.1 miles) away from the center of the city and has a direct rail link to Vilnius railway station. The Vilnius railway station is an important hub serving direct passenger connections to Minsk, Kaliningrad, Moscow and St. Petersburg as well as being a transit point of pan-European corridor X. Vilnius is the starting point of the A1 motorway that runs across Lithuania and connects the three major cities Vilnius, Kaunas and Klaipeda and is a part of European route E85. The A2 motorway, connecting Vilnius with Panevezis, is a part of E272. Other highways starting in Vilnius include A3, A4, A14, A15, A16. Vilnius Southern Bypass is road A19. Topic. Public transport The bus network and the trolleybus network are run by Vilnius Visasis Transportis. There are over 60 bus, 18 trolleybus, 6 rapid bus and 6 night bus routes. The trolleybus network is one of the most extensive in Europe. Over 250 buses and 260 trolleybuses transport about 500,000 passengers every workday. The first regular bus routes were established in 1926, and the first trolleybuses were introduced in 1956. At the end of 2007, a new electronic monthly ticket system was introduced. It was possible to buy an electronic card in shops and newspaper stands and have it credited with an appropriate amount of money. The monthly e-ticket cards could be bought once and credited with an appropriate amount of money in various ways including the Internet. Previous paper monthly tickets were in use until August 2008. The ticket system changed again from the 15th of August 2012. E-cards were replaced by Vilnius citizen cards, Vilniusio Kortel. It is now possible to buy a card or change an old one in newspaper stands and have it credited with an appropriate amount of money or a particular type of ticket. Single trip tickets have been replaced by 30 and 60 minute tickets. The public transportation system is dominated by the low-floor Volvo and Mercedes-Benz buses as well as Solaris trolleybuses. There are also plenty of the traditional Škoda vehicles, built in the Czech Republic, still in service, and many of these have been extensively refurbished internally. This is a result of major improvements that started in 2003 when the first brand new Mercedes-Benz buses were bought. In 2004, a contract was signed with Volvo Buses to buy 90 brand new 7,700 buses over the following three years. An electric tram and a metro system through the city were proposed in the 2000s. However, neither has progressed beyond initial planning. In 2017, Vilnius started the historically largest upgrade of its buses by purchasing 250 new low floor buses. 
The project will result in making six of ten public buses being brand new by the middle of 2018 and will allow its passengers to use such modern technologies as free Wi-Fi and to charge their electronic devices while traveling. On 5 September 2017, 50 new Isuzu buses were presented and articulated Scania buses were promised in the very near future. Vilnius City Municipality also held a contest for 41 new trolleybuses and its winner Solaris committed to deliver all trolleybuses until the autumn of 2018, which will also have the free Wi-Fi and charging features. On November 13, Vilnius City Municipality signed a contract with Solaris for the remaining 150 Solaris Urbino buses of the newest IV generation 100 standard and 50 articulated, also with the free Wi-Fi and USB charging. Topic. Governance Topic. Municipal Council Vilnius City Municipality is one of 60 municipalities of Lithuania and includes the nearby town of Grigisks, three villages, and some rural areas. The town of Grigisks was separated from the Trakai District Municipality and attached to the Vilnius City Municipality in 2000. A 51-member council is elected to four-year terms, the candidates are nominated by registered political parties. As of the 2011 elections, independent candidates also were permitted. The last election was held in March 2015. The results are Liberal Movement 15 seats The Coalition of the Electoral Action of Poles in Lithuania and Lithuanian Russian Union 10 Homeland Union, Lithuanian Christian Democrats 8 Lithuanian Freedom Union Liberals 6 Social Democratic Party of Lithuania 4 Lithuanian List 4 Order and Justice 3 Topic Mayors Before 2015 mayors were appointed by the council starting with the elections in 2015 the mayors are elected directly by the residents Remigius Samasius became the first directly elected mayor of the city. 1990 Arunas Grumadas, the president of council. 1993 Valentinas Sapalas, the president of council. 1995 Alis Vidunas. 1997 Rolandis Poxas. 1999 Uuzas Ambrosas. 2000 Rolandis Poxas, second time. 2001 Arturas Zwokas. 2003 Gediminas Pavirzis 2003 Arturas Zwokas second time 2007 Uuzas Ambrosas second time 2009 Vilius Navikas 2010 Raimundas Alagna 2011 Arturas Zwokas third time 2015 Remigius Samasius topic subdivisions Elderships, a statewide administrative division, function as municipal districts. The 21 elderships are based on neighborhoods. Verkiai includes Baltupii, Gerizali, Santarisks, Balsii, Visarii. Antakalnis includes Valakampii, Turnisks, Devarchonis. Pasileshii includes Terend. Fabihoniskis includes Badgerai. Pilet Justiniskis. Versuliskis Seskin Snipisks Zermanai — includes Sayors Mistali Karolinisks Zverinas Grigisks — a separate town Lazdanai Vilkpied — includes Vingus Park Naujamistis — includes bus and train stations Sanamiestis — old town — includes Uzipi Naujoji Vilnia Includes Pavilnis, Pukorii, Panerii, includes Traku Vok, Garaanai, Naujininkai, includes Kurtamai, Salininkai, Vilnius International Airport, Rossos, includes Belmontas, Markusii. Topic: Twin towns, sister cities. Vilnius is twinned with. Topic. Significant depictions in popular culture 
Vilnius is mentioned in the movie The Hunt for Red October 1990 as being the boyhood home of the sub-commander Marco Ramius, and as being where his grandfather taught him to fish. He is also referenced once in the movie as the Vilnius schoolmaster. Ramius is played by Sean Connery. Author Thomas Harris's character Hannibal Lecter is revealed to be from Vilnius and its aristocracy in the movie Hannibal Rising. Lecter is portrayed more popularly and often by Sir Anthony Hopkins, although Brian Cox played Lecter in the movie Manhunter. The memoir A Partisan from Vilna 2010 details the life and struggles of Rachel Margolis. Her family's sole survivor, she escaped from the Vilna ghetto with other members of the resistance movement, the FPO United Partisan Organization, and joined the Soviet partisans in the Lithuanian forests to sabotage the Nazis. Vilnius is classified as a city-state in the turn-based strategy game Civilization V. Topic: Notable people. Topic: See also. Archdiocese of Vilnius. Coat of arms of Vilnius. List of monuments in Vilnius. List of Vilnians. List of Vilnius elderships in other languages Neighborhoods of Vilnius Vilna Ghetto References External links Vilnius Travel Guide from Wikivoyage Official website in Lithuanian in Polish in English in Russian the Jerusalem of Lithuania, the story of the Jewish community of Vilna an online exhibition by Yad Vashem Vilnius from Bird Flight Comprehensive photo gallery of Vilnius by Baltic Reports editor Video preview of Vilnius Capital of Culture Virtual historical Vilnius Public transportation schedules and timetables in Vilnius Erasmus in Vilnius and Info Vilnius, Lithuania at JewishGen